Hello, welcome to this episode of Mini Gem, brought to you by the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is Dr. Laura Butler, and what I would like to talk to you about is assessing vision in older patients. At the end of this Mini Gem, hopefully you will understand the importance of assessing vision in older patients, have a bit of an idea of actually how to assess vision. You will also hopefully be able to consider what might be found on examination of a patient's vision and also to understand the basic management of these potential findings. Vision is an extremely important part of the balance system along with the inner ears, the muscles and joints all interacting with the brain. In the elderly it is likely that all three of these components may be compromised in some way and poor visual acuity has been shown in papers to double the risk of falls. Importantly, this can be reversible, and if there is a reversible cause, it should be identified and treated. This slide just gives you a bit of an idea of where to start when thinking about assessing a patient's vision. These are some of the questions that you should ask in your your initial assessment. Make sure that they have the correct glasses, i.e. for distance or for reading, and that they are clean. Remember to ask about red flag symptoms. Red flag symptoms include a sudden loss of vision, sudden being very quickly over the last few days or weeks, pain in the eye, a new visual field defect that is not attributable to a known neurological deficit such as a stroke, any new double vision, again, that is not attributable to known pathology, and any new onset of flashing lights, floaters or shadows in the vision. If patients describe any of these symptoms, it would be wise to call an ophthalmologist for some advice early on. So how do we actually measure vision in our patients? It can be particularly difficult in the elderly, in patients who perhaps have cognitive impairment or are less able to cooperate. But if you are able to get a visual acuity, the best way to do it is with a Snellen chart. You can get printable versions downloadable from the internet and they're also available on many iPhone apps for free. When measuring vision, it is important to make sure that the patient has their distance glasses on and that they are clean. Measure each eye separately. As a rough guide, 612 is a driving standard. And a reduction in previously recorded vision warrants some form of further investigation. After visual acuity, a good pattern for examination is as follows. The picture on the slides demonstrates an RAPD, or relative afferent pupillary defect. The affected pupil is the one that continues to dilate despite the torch being shone on it. If there are no colour vision charts available, which there is unlikely to be in a general ward, you can check red desaturation by showing the patient something that is bright red with their unaffected eye and then asking them to look at it with the affected eye only and ask them if it has changed colour. If they say it looks duller than in the other eye, this suggests some sort of pathology with the optic nerve. This is a brief reminder of the retinal anatomy that you should hopefully be able to see when performing ophthalmoscopy. The first thing to find is the optic disc and then look at the superior and inferior vessels and the area in between, which is the macula. The first part of any examination is to inspect and this slide shows a subcontinent type of hemorrhage, which, unless caused by trauma, is usually spontaneous and is fairly benign. This slide shows a red injected eye with some discharge on the lower lid and this is indicative of bacterial conjunctivitis it would be worth taking a swab for confirmation. After inspection, we would then move on to anterior examination using the ophthalmoscope. On the left picture, you can see a small white opacification near the pupil on the cornea of the eye. And this is a corneal ulcer, which is referable to ophthalmology on an urgent basis. The right-hand picture shows a cataract, which can be referred on a more routine basis. This slide again shows different types of cataracts. The slide on the right is using retroillumination by shining the ophthalmoscope directly into the pupil to highlight the lens opacity. Moving more posteriorly, these slides demonstrate a very common problem of macular degeneration, which is age-related and so will be very common in our older patient population. The picture on the left of the screen shows dry age-related macular degeneration with scattered yellow drusen. And the slide on the right shows wet macular degeneration with bleeding in the macular area, which will have caused a significant and sudden drop in vision. It's important to distinguish between these two forms as wet AMD is treatable, but dry is not. And the urgency of referral will be different for each.
Vitreous haemorrhage is often a problem in patients who have diabetes or who have had trauma. It will be very difficult to see anything other than blood on ophthalmoscopy and this is the kind of view that you might get. Having gone through some of the findings that you might pick up when doing a visual assessment, it is important to think about what we do with that information. It might be useful to take a picture of this table which goes through some of the basic conditions and the treatment and referral process for these. It is important to note, however, if you are unsure, please don't hesitate to phone an on-call ophthalmologist to discuss. The take-home messages of this mini-gem are that vision is important in preventing falls. It is a crucial part of the balance system, and if poor vision can be treated, it should be to prevent any further falls in our elderly patients. Causes of poor vision, such as cataract, can be treated, but these need to be picked up first of all. Importantly, if you are unsure or worried, then ask for advice. If you are interested and would like to read a bit more about assessment of the vision in the elderly, the first two articles listed on the slide give some practical guidance on how to do this. The link at the bottom of the slide is to various algorithms produced by Edinburgh University which are freely available to look at, which take you through various ophthalmology problems from a red eye to visual loss and are very helpful in the acute situation. Thanks for listening and I hope you will now be more confident in assessing vision in your elderly patients. Thanks.